Could it be time to ditch PowerPoint, Keynote and Google Slides? Let me introduce you to Pitch. It's Martin SFP Bryant here from Big Revolution, the channel all about how tech companies communicate and how tech can help you communicate. And today I want to talk about creating presentations. If you have to build slide decks as part of your job, you probably use Microsoft PowerPoint, Apple Keynote or Google Slides. They're all perfectly good at the job, but... Pitch comes from the same Berlin-based team who created Wonderlist, the to-do list app that launched almost exactly 10 years ago. I wrote about it at the time and followed its progress as the app developed before eventually being sold to Microsoft. Not so long ago, Microsoft shut Wonderlist down, but now its founding team are back. They're independent, having raised $50 million in funding, and now they've launched Pitch. Some of the things I liked about the original version of Wonderlist like how it's really easy to use with simple keyboard shortcuts and a really high quality look are all here with Pitch. But what really sets Pitch apart from the competition is how they've really thought about how to build something that lets you really imprint your own identity or your business's identity onto the presentations that you create in a really easy, straightforward way. And collaborating with your team on a presentation is often an afterthought in this kind of app. But here, it's a core use case, with plenty of little touches to help you work better with others in real time. Now, I could carry on telling you about all of this, but it would be much easier to show you. And rather than me show you, little Martin is going to show you. He's a lot smaller than me, he has slightly longer hair, and he is over hovering in a little box in front of Pitch right now. Hello, little Martin. Hello. So he's going to give you a tour of Pitch's most interesting features. Over to you, little Martin. Thank you, Big Martin. Now, when you log into Pitch, this is what you see. You've got templates across the top. We'll look at those in a moment. And then below that, you've got the recently edited presentations, things you've been working on, plus a couple of tutorials here. So if we look at one I've recently actually finished and used myself in presentations, uh, this is... Uh, what it looks like when you're editing it and you can see that it's very similar to other presentation software in the, the layout is the slides down the side you've got your main slide in the middle and then you've got uh, various tools across the top down the side and also at the bottom that you can use to work on your presentation now as you can see there's a lot of templates to choose from and I think that even though these are really gorgeous looking, a lot of these, you know, they look really nice, better than what you'd find in presentation software usually, the danger is that everyone just uses these stock templates and uh, within six months to a year, everyone's like, oh, they're using pitch, that's just a standard pitch template. And the sense of style and any individuality is completely stripped out of it. But what pitch does really well is it gives you an opportunity to really customize these to make them really suit your needs and uh, whether you've got a designer on your team or whether you're just doing it yourself you can really make them look like they're yours rather than something you've just clicked accept on in a template list so let's just dig into one then shall we and I think we'll choose this one, Design Exploration, but we could choose any of them. Uh, you get uh, at the bottom a list of all the slides, so you can see what they all look like. What we'll do is we'll add all 24 slides, and then if I just quickly whiz down, you can see what all of these look like. Now, we won't go into all the details of how to create a presentation in in depth but I think it's worth looking at the design section so this section up in the top right hand corner if I click this if I float myself down there so we can get a better look at it what you've got is presentation styles and these are great because what you can do is you can edit them if I go to this you can edit anything here so you can uh, edit the colors you can edit the fonts uh, the background colors uh, all the different style sections here so the title uh, the headline the subheadline you can define how they all look so whether you are just doing this for yourself and you just want a an on-brand personal look for all your presentations or whether you are a designer or you've got a designer on your team and you want your designer to be able to log into pitch and set up a, a template style 
So they don't have to create a template that all your presentations need to look like, but they can create a style that all your presentations then follow in terms of the fonts they use, uh, the colors they use, uh, if you're very much about branding. And let's face it, a lot of designers are incredibly strict about this stuff. Um, I've, I've seen people complain that their designer made them go back and change a presentation because the weighting on a font was slightly wrong, things like that. And they're understandably, uh, you know, designers are understandably precious about this stuff because it is actually important if you're creating a look for your company. And uh, what I love about Pitch is it makes it really easy to do that. So if I just change some of this, let's, let's change the orange to, I'm not going to use the actual big revolution blue because um, I'd have to go and find the exact uh, colors for it but um, uh, you can set the hex you can set uh, the numerical value for it or you can just pick a color like that and you see that this is a link is now blue rather than orange um, now we might want to change however the link color to orange ish so it's a bit more visible and we might want to change the fonts. So these are the fonts that are standard for this style, but there are plenty of fonts built in, but you can also upload fonts. So if you've got a custom font that your designer or you yourself uh, love to use in your identity for your brand, you can just upload whichever fonts you use and they will be available to you. I'll just change these a little bit more and we'll get that one into maybe that. Let's change the background color. Let's change it to something like that. And you get the idea. You can then set all of the line spacing, letter spacing, etc. It's all uh, very easy to do. Now, if I click save. I've now changed that style, but if I then change, double click that, all my slides change to an alternative presentation style. So you can see how if you create new styles from scratch, you can have a bunch of different styles and then whatever your slides look like, you can simply click on the presentation style that you want and all your slides change. A few other things I just want to show you quickly about this. Let's uh, start a new slide here. We'll just go for, let's just go for this one, um, but we'll get rid of the text because I want to show you the media integration here. So you often want to put pictures into a presentation, but having to find the right picture can be a real pain and it can involve searching around on the web or locking into a stock media site somewhere else. Unsplash is built in to pitch and Unsplash is a free stock media site. Let's say I want a picture of an iPhone for my presentation here. I, I just type in iPhone. Hey, look, lots and lots of lovely pictures of iPhones here. So I'll just pick that one. And then we can do things like change the opacity of it. We can blur it if we want to. We can add rounded corners. Let's set exactly how rounded we want them to be. We can add an overlay. So if we want to give it a a branded look, say, uh, you could you could add. Let's just add that big revolution blue again, or blue equivalent, something like that. You can even add a shadow if you want to and you can just move that shadow like that. Very nice. And one thing I will say about this, unfortunately, is it's, it is quite difficult. If you do want to credit the photographer, it is quite difficult to do so. You'd actually have to click through there to the actual photographer's Unsplash profile and then copy and paste their name and add a credit manually by adding text. It would be quite nice to maybe have some kind of option to credit the photographer, either a little credit there or a little credit at the bottom or add a credit to a, a credit slide at the end or something like that, uh, just to do, do the right thing thing if you like by by photographers there's also gifts so you could search for let's search for iphone again and you've got a bunch of iphone gifts you can insert and icons as well so again it's search for iphone here and we've got a, a bunch of iphone gifts so 
lots of ways of bringing in high quality stock media with absolutely zero pain at all. It's great. And it's very easy to add shapes as well and to edit them. I like this one. Let me change that one to a black. Add a stroke in it. Change the stroke to orange. And then change the stroke width like that. And that just gives it a nice look. So you can play around with uh, shapes, you can add stickers. I don't know how many people will actually use these stickers, but it's a nice touch if you want to add them. Uh, also, this is great, adding sheets. So you can actually integrate with Google Sheets and Google Analytics. So let's say you've got uh, some website stats you want to include. You can simply connect up your Google Analytics account and you can very easily just import the analytics. It, it, it's great. And the same with Google Sheets as well. And importing a YouTube video is just a case of pasting in the link and then the video appears right there. And you can do the same with Vimeo and with Loom as well. So one thing I want to talk about as well is collaboration, which is a huge part of the cell for pitch. So there are some great features here. Uh, so you can mark slides as to do, in progress or done. And you can see that little marks appear next to them up there. You can also assign tasks to different slides. Uh, so maybe for this one, I might assign somebody else to it because they have to add a picture to it or they have to write the text for it. And there are comments, there are notes and these fun reactions. So if I really like this slide, I might celebrate with that or somebody else might hate it and add a thumbs down and then you can just get rid of them by clicking them. So these are all just little touches that help make collaboration in pitch just that little bit easier. One more thing I want to draw your attention to is the keyboard shortcuts. So this little lightning bolt here, click that and you get to see a menu of all the different keyboard shortcuts that are available to you. And a lot of these are literally just a keystroke, a single keystroke to do things like I to insert an image or S to insert a shape, N for a new slide, etc. And a lot of these are often buried in software, but people don't really make a big deal of them. But if you know about them, and uh, if we go back to that menu, you can actually search. So if I want to search for set slide status, I can see exactly what I have to do. And once you've learned these, you fly around the software so much quicker. Uh, so example, you know, I press N, and you slide arrives. I press I, and I can search for an image. Uh, so it, it's just a, a much quicker way of using it. And if I go back to the menu and click it, you can see that it's actually contextual. Uh, so the help you get uh, and the exact uh, shortcuts are different depending on where you are. So that, that's really handy. And it really, it really does remind me of Superhuman, the way they've done it, uh, the same kind of presentation of the shortcuts. And so if you use the email app Superhuman, then uh, you'll be in a, a very comfortable place using pitch, I think. So I've just given you a brief overview of some of the things I find most interesting about Pitch, but now back to Big Martin for some more thoughts. Thanks, Little Martin. Now, Pitch is available on the web and via a Windows app and a Mac OS app. It's free to sign up for and use, and there is also a pro version, which is $10 per user per month, and that offers additional security and permissions features and the ability to upload video, so you can uh, put videos on your presentations that aren't already hosted somewhere like YouTube. Pitch is entering a tough market. PowerPoint and Google Slides are already integrated into the most popular productivity suites in the world. Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace. And Keynote is free as long as you've got Apple hardware to run it on. And many businesses already have a culture built around particular presentation software that can be quite hard to shift. But you only have to look at how Slack has grown over the last few years through a bottom-up approach whereby individual teams within a large company used Slack, loved Slack, and eventually got the big bosses to pay for it. 
you could see how that could possibly work for pitch. And there are plenty of small teams and small startups out there that could easily switch to pitch without any problem at all. As we heard earlier, Pitch reminds me of Superhuman, the premium email service that adds a level of sheen and attention to detail to email that some people find so appealing they're willing to pay $30 a month for it. There's a much lower barrier to entry with Pitch, but I hope that both Superhuman and Pitch are part of what will be a wider trend among startups for challenging the long established productivity apps we use and take for granted, uh, rethinking the whole thing without any of the legacy baggage and backwards compatibility that those big apps have to think about. If you've tried Pitch, leave a comment under this video and let me know what you think of it and whether you agree with my take on it. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to this channel right now. And if you want some more big revolution in your life, then why not have the newsletter hitting your inbox six days a week? I bring you news and analysis and opinion from around the tech world six days a week in the newsletter. Just go to bigrevolution.net slash newsletter and uh, we'll start sending that to you. That's all for now. See you later.